Hey there, friends. Well, they're still after him. Another failed attempt on Donald Trump's life. These people are really after him. First, guys, please go check out my friends Gideon Optics. These guys make amazing optics. If you're looking for something that you can either put on a pistol or an AR-15 or any kind, heck, if you want a rifle and reach out there, you guys know the discount code FTATF, you'll get 10% off. Again, go to GideonOptics.com. FTATF received 10% off. Folks, I'm going to break this down kind of a who, what, why, how standpoint just to kind of lay this out because since yesterday when the failed attempt on Donald Trump happened at Mar-a-Lago, so much information has come in. Actually, a lot more information than what we saw in Butler, Pennsylvania. Different story right there. First of all, kudos real quick. I heard that Ron DeSantis with his massive distrust of the federal government based on what he saw in Butler, Pennsylvania, has decided that the state of Florida will conduct their own independent investigation separate from the federal government. Thank God. First of all, the who? Some wacko named Ryan Routh. This is a hardcore wacko left-leaning Democrat, big time, big time Ukraine supporter. This guy allegedly voted for Donald Trump in 2016, but got upset that Donald Trump wasn't doing things his way and voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in 2020. Now, when I say wacko blue-haired liberal, it's not a joke. This dude literally fits the description of what I describe whenever I say that. Of course, you all know the story so far. He propped up in a little setup area right outside Donald Trump's golf course and had supposedly the muzzle of his SKS that was poking through a fence and was spotted. When he got spotted, shots were fired at him and he hauled butt. He was caught 50 miles down the road and was taken into custody without a shot being fired. And supposedly, he's still alive right now. The guy is such a raging supporter of Ukraine that he actually wanted to go to Ukraine and fight for them. Even said he, he would lose his own life if he had to. It's a shame that didn't happen. So he's even in a post from some Ukrainian people, as well as a commercial, a really sad commercial, where they're trying to recruit people to go die for Ukraine while they take all of our money, some over $200 billion worth of American taxpayer money. But yeah, they want you to go die as a result of that too. So not only do you give them all your money, give them your life too. And this clown was stupid enough to do it. That's him right there in the video. Now, this guy has made over 19 different, small at best, but 19 different contributions to the Democrat Party, none to the Republican Party. So for those that say they're not sure about his political affiliation, I can help you with that. Dude has a rap sheet, too. Now, usually when someone has a rap sheet like this, they're not your most put together person and tend to have a little bit of a screw loose and for sure like good judgment. This dude was definitely in that category. Now to the what? Okay, I took to Google Earth to get this shot of the Mar-a-Lago golf course. The hole that you see at the top running horizontally, that is hole number five. The hole that runs vertically on the right-hand side of the screen, that's hole number six. Supposedly Trump was on hole number five when all this went down and the shooter was on hole number six, and that's where, allegedly, the Secret Service guy saw the muzzle poking out of the fence, supposedly aiming at Trump, and then took some shots at the guy not hitting him. Now, these guys likely had pistols on them. Um, not sure if they had rifles, but again, more than likely pistols, because I doubt they expected anything to happen, so taking a pistol shot from a long ways off kind of makes sense if they didn't hit the guy. So taking a closer look, at these two holes on Donald Trump's golf course. I want you to take a look here. This is likely the only places that Trump could have been where somebody had a line of sight to him. Look at all the trees that run in the middle, kind of where that pond is. These five little spots that are left over here, actually there's seven total, those are tee boxes that you would tee off of going to that green further up in front of you. Well, this is hole number five. This is supposed to be the hole that Donald Trump was on whenever the shooter was eyeballing him when somebody saw him on the next hole in front of there. I want you to notice all the trees that run through the middle of these two holes that sort of separate them. You'll notice the palm trees way at the top of the screen here. That's the fence line, right? That's the fence line that runs down hole number six. Well, that fence line is certainly obstructed, at least from the tee boxes here, 
that you might have any kind of shot with those trees right there. Those trees are blocking those tee boxes from pretty much all that fence line except for one little spot right in the middle there of that area, if you want to call that a peninsula that comes out. Now remember, the guy did not get a shot off. The Secret Service just happened to spot him, but they say the guy had the muzzle of the SKS poking through the fence aiming at Trump. Now, clearly he didn't have a clear shot or he just didn't feel the need to take one but it's doubtful that he would have been anywhere on these tee boxes. Now, if you go further down the fairway, closer to the green, you notice it's gonna open up to your right there and certainly have a much clearer shot down that tree line. Now remember, he's also shooting an SKS, which from an effectiveness standpoint, isn't actually considered a, a you know a, uh, any kind of a precision rifle. That's more of a close quarter type shooting. You know, you're looking at two to four, 500 yards max of its capability obviously it's going, to, it's going to hit something at that but it's not going to be deadly precise at 500 yards so this is going down hole number six that's likely the fence line somewhere in this area where they're saying they have not pinpointed that spot yet when they do i will recreate this and certainly show where the vantage points were that this guy could have taken a shot at trump but as you can see looking at all this area right here trees play a very big part and what this guy would have been able to see and anybody else being able to see the alleged uh, assassin or attempted assassin because the trees are going to affect everything one way whether the the killer or the shooter is looking or the secret service is looking and i have to say was the secret service really looking more on that later so now i want to give you some vantage points of what the blue-haired nutjob democrat might have been looking at these are vantage points from down that tree line right against that highway look how crazy this is that we have the leading political presidential candidate of the republican party on this golf course and that's as good as they've got as far as security down that fence line nobody patrolling the fence line not even if they talk about not having enough people because trump wasn't the sitting president i don't understand why you couldn't post somebody at various intervals on here whether it be at each corner or at each corner and then one guy in between somebody just to have eyeballs on there sometimes just having a presence of three or four guys around the perimeter of this place would have been enough of a deterrent to not only keep somebody from coming in here but somebody likely would have spotted him i keep hearing this crap about we didn't have the manpower or the secret service didn't provide enough you're talking about a billionaire here you're talking about for sure the most popular person in palm beach and you couldn't station a couple of guys somewhere around this place to be able to visibly see or deter somebody from getting onto this property i find that a little bit hard to believe now, Sheriff Bradshaw, who is the sheriff of this particular county, is the one that came out and said the reason why there wasn't more protective detail for Trump is because he's not the sitting president. I've got to say this real quick, guys. This is typical government. This is the way government thinks. I'm talking about the Secret Service, and I'm talking about this sheriff. People that are in business for themselves, me, you guys, whoever, or even people who work for somebody else, and you're a supervisor, a manager, you manage processes, you make them better when you can. When you see failures, you correct them. Not government. This guy says, oh, well, the reason why Trump didn't have the detail, he's not the sitting president, so naturally there wouldn't have been enough people to protect him. That's essentially what he's saying when he says that's the excuse why he didn't have more people. Typical government. We have a guy who somebody already attempted to take his life, literally shot at him, hit him in the ear. So we know that there is an ongoing threat. Plus, we listen to Christopher Ray and everybody else talk about how Iran wants him dead. And everybody else, I'm sure, I'm sure the Haitians by now want him dead too. So you're telling me there's a rule that says only the sitting president gets this many guys and anybody else, no matter how many times somebody has tried to kill them, the rules are they only get this much. Really? That's how government works. Even when you have a reason to increase those numbers and make a change, even when you literally have a reason right in front of you, somebody tried to kill him, you still don't change it because them's the rules. No, nope, can't do it. That's what it says right here on line number 12 that we can't put more guys out there because he's not the sitting president. Well, wait a minute, he got shot at. Oh no, the rule says 
not a sitting president. Well, who makes that rule? I don't know. It's been like that for a long time. Well, who can change the rule? Well, I don't know. Can you change the rule? Yes, you can change the rule. Change it. Put more people out there. Now, Bradshaw, being a liberal himself, he was talking about, and this kind of blew my mind, this is so typical of somebody who's very disconnected with pretty much anything, including reality. Whenever they asked him how far the shooter was from Trump, looking at this overhead map again, he said 300 to 500 yards. That's a really big distance difference, right? <laughs> That's the distance of two football fields. Oh, somewhere in between 300 and 500. Somewhere between three football fields, four football fields, and five football fields. Somewhere in that range. Really, that's the best you could do. I literally have Google Maps here, and I was able to come down to the exact yard. If you look right here, these are the areas that I was talking about. Look up ahead, not the farthest tee box behind the uh, cart path there, but the five in front from that rear one. That's 271 yards to that tree line. So at the closest, that attempted shooter was 271 yards away. So I looked, the only spots that were visually accessible from that guy is somewhere around here. If you look where the 341 yards is, that's that little gap in between the trees. Now, granted, I'm not saying that's where the guy was. I'm telling you, visually, if he were to see to those tee boxes, he'd be about 341 yards away. Personally, I think from the description that I've seen in a couple of areas that he was closer down here by the green on this hole number six, like on that road right there. So likely it's still going to be about 300. Looks like that's actually less, maybe 330 yards possibly. So this guy was more like 320 to 350 yards from Trump, certainly not 500 yards away, which would have put him across the street well into another neighborhood. Now, by now, most of you have seen the guy's little perch his GoPro camera hanging on the fence. The two bags that he has, they keep calling these things ceramic tiles. I'm not sure if we have a, a mason that's in the newsroom or not, but uh, yeah, these are not ceramic tiles in these bags. These are literally ceramic plates. These are plates from a plate carrier that are inside these bags, not ceramic tiles like they keep incorrectly calling them. Speaking of incorrectly calling them, they're calling this an AK-47, and as good as we can tell from this crappy picture, this is either a modified or an SKS, a modified SKS or just a standard SKS. It looks like it has a different butt stock and some other amenities on it that have been changed up a little bit. But looking at the gas block and the gas tube, this is more than likely, and, and kind of look at the position of the magazine being far up front too. This is more than likely an SKS. I thought it was interesting that this guy has the twine and the strings holding the bags up on the fence and holding them against the fence as if he were making shots like this, that that was going to potentially keep him from being shot if there was some return gunfire. Maybe hanging those plates up there would give him some sense of comfort for some reason. I can't really tell what direction his GoPro is facing, if it's facing outward or inward. I have to think that it might be facing, just knowing where the lenses are on these GoPros, I don't think it's facing outward because that lens would be right up against that wire of the fence right there. So my guess is it's probably facing back at him. So he was probably going to film him setting up the shot and potentially taking the shot uh, so he could probably get, I don't know if he was going to live stream it or what. Some of these GoPros you can live stream. So my guess is he was likely going to try to live stream this. I'm curious if that thing had been on whenever he took off or whenever they found this. They do have pretty decent batteries. Now, today he had charges hit against him, and they were possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and possession of an obliterated serial number on a firearm. Apparently, the guy scrubbed, or somebody scrubbed this AK-40, excuse me, SKS. The serial number's off of them. Now, the guy was already a felon, so we know he didn't fill out a background check whenever he did this. I doubt he obliterated those numbers himself. He likely got them from somebody else. Begs the question, where to get them from? This is not a popular gun to be buying out of a trunk in the hood. You don't see SKSs in the hood. I'm not saying there aren't any. What I'm saying is that's not a cool gun, cool gun, for the hood. So if this dude bought it on a black market somewhere, I'm curious to know what type of person he bought this from. 
and I'm putting some red flags up there, if you haven't noticed. This is very suspect that this guy is armed with an SKS. AK-47 still, because this is not, even if it were, it were an AK-47, and again, it's not. But being in that type of firearm, very strange that he has that. I mean, they already covered the AR with the Butler shooting. Now let's get the AK variants, as they like to call this, even though it's an SKS. So that's not a very typical firearm for somebody to be buying from somebody that stole it and resold it somewhere. So it's unlikely he got this at the gas station a couple blocks away. Remember, this guy flew. He's originally from North Carolina, but he lives in Hawaii. He flew in from Hawaii. Brings the other question. Again, I'm throwing up red flags here because this does not, not make sense to me. The vehicle that he had, which was a Nissan SUV, had a license plate on it. The license plate was from a 2012 stolen Ford pickup truck. It seems pretty planned out, right? I mean, don't know how he got the vehicle yet. Don't know how he got the license plate yet. That seems kind of common as somebody who might want to be hiding an identity. Hey, I got you a vehicle and I got a different plate on it. Just seems a little bit set up. Again, the firearm, I'm throwing that in there also as being a little odd. Now to continue on with the how. This guy, supposedly they pinged his phone and were able to pinpoint his location, where he was and when he got there, at 1.59 a.m. he was in this tree line. And 1.31 p.m. that day is whenever he was busted and took off running. This guy was in this tree line for about 12 hours and was there from 1.59 a.m. in the morning. I've heard a lot of people talk about this stuff. I was texting back and forth with Mike from Mr. Guns and Gear yesterday about this very thing. And he made an excellent point. In fact, I told him I was going to steal his idea from him. This was an unscheduled golf trip. Trump did not have it on his schedule. Uh, nowhere was it listed. He did not have a tee time listed in the clubhouse. None of that. Just decided to go play golf. Unannounced. With a couple of friends. So there was no schedule where anybody would have known what was going on. However... Trump had to tell Secret Service because they had to get their stuff together to go golfing. Not saying they said anything. Not saying they leaked it. I'm telling you the people who knew. That would have been the Secret Service. Maybe his wife, maybe his close family members. Doubt you're going to get a leak out of them, right? So very limited amount of people who knew this guy was going to play golf that day. Now again, think back. This guy, Ruth or Ralph, whatever his name is, was there since almost right around 2 a.m. in the morning. So he didn't have a specific time either, but he was pretty sure something was going to happen or else very unlikely he would have hung around for 12 hours just waiting for his target to come out there. Now, when Mike and I were texting each other, he made an excellent point. The point that I told him I was going to steal is that he could have been looking at restricted airspace. Because if the restricted airspace, which it would have been if Trump were going to be on the links playing golf, that airspace would have been restricted. So if he had an app, which you can get, that shows you restricted airspace, it's not restricted all the time. Like if Trump's not there, it's not restricted. An airplane could fly over it. But whenever he's there, or at least out on the golf course, it's certainly going to be restricted airspace. So he could have been monitoring that. Or, again, something was leaked. He may not have known exactly the moment that Donald Trump was going to come outside and play golf. Sure seems like he knew, though, that Donald Trump was going to be playing that day. Because even though he was out there for 12 hours, he wasn't out there for 12 days just waiting. He picked the right day. Another thing that I want to point out that is very, very suspect. Did you notice how so far we have two attempts on Donald Trump's life? I get that they didn't shoot at Trump. The guy was there to shoot Trump. Let's just be real about that. So two attempts on his life. Both times, the best place to take a shot at Trump was used. The only place better than the AGR building in Butler would have been on stage with Trump, <laughs> right? There was no better line of sight, if you think about it. Maybe the two buildings behind him where the snipers were and the AGR building. Those were the best vantage points to take a shot. If you were going to do 
what they did in Butler, that would have been spot number one. Even if no one was out there, no obstructions were there, and you walked out there and said, Trump is going to be right here, there's going to be a bunch of people right here, where do you want to get to take a shot at him? I'll take the AGR building. Same in this case. So we have Secret Service people who survey these areas and know these areas. Trust me, they know Mar-a-Lago. They know every square inch of that place, right? So they know that they're mere feet from the highway, let alone the shoulder of the road if somebody were to pull over from where the car path is if somebody were to, to decide to get anywhere near that hole number six, right? If you look at this entire golf course, there is no better spot unless you're literally on the golf course with Donald Trump to take a shot at him. So both places, both covered by Secret Service and the best real estate to take a shot at the former president, both times were uncovered, left uncovered with nobody there. Boy, that just doesn't seem... <laughs> I, I try to wrap my head around that and rationalize things like that to go, nah, I don't think so, Paul. I can't in this case. Those, those were the most obvious places to cover. You didn't have to scratch your head and go, well, you know, maybe, maybe the average person would think of that place. No, this dumbest person would think of those places. Everybody would. No one would say... It's like, where would you want to get on a boat to throw a rock farther than everybody else? I'm going to stand at the front of the boat. I'm not going to stand at the back. Give me to the front. Put me on the bow and I'm going to throw a rock farther than everybody else. Same thing here. These are no-brainers. It doesn't take a tactician or some kind of special ops guy figure out that those were the two best places to set up in order to shoot Donald Trump. Now, the media, they're not having it this time. They're not being quite as nice as they were last time. Last time, they at least shut up. We knew what they were thinking. They were glad that Trump got shot at. They were mad that he that they missed. But we knew what they were thinking. At least they were shut up about it, or they did shut up about it last time. Now the media, politicians, all those folks, they're still going at it. Time Magazine said the suspect arrested in relation to the shooting at Trump's golf course in Florida on Sunday had been identified as Ryan Ralph, a 58-year-old, with unclear political ideology. It's very clear where this guy stood. Time's just running cover. They don't want it to look like their guys are the ones doing it, and their guys are the ones doing it. NBC News said, man in custody after a Trump golf club incident. Really, it's an assassination attempt, if you want to call it something else. Just saying here. Now, granted, they have reasons to not want you to think these people are Democrats. They also like to make you think Democrats don't own guns. We know a lot of Democrats that own guns. There's Democrats that follow this channel that have had very cordial conversations. I don't understand why they still vote Democrat, because Democrats always vote against the Second Amendment. But there are some very polite and professional Democrats that follow this channel who are gun owners and supporters of the Second Amendment. Again, I don't know how that works. Seems kind of oil and watery-ish. But it is a thing. And I think what they try to show everybody is... Only crazy people have guns, and only crazy people use guns. Well, the only crazy people who are using guns to try to kill Donald Trump so far are people who support Democrats. That's the only ones I see doing this. All this hateful rhetoric, it makes you wonder if they're not trying to get some of the Republicans and some of the Second Amendment supporters to act out and to respond so they can say, See, I told you. Even though the FBI was wrong all these times, they finally got it right. Kind of like the broken clock being right twice a day. Guys, we know that the wackos on the far left do not like Trump. They hate Trump. They talk about hate all the time. They talk about hate because they recognize it. Because they hate so severely. They hate this man so much, they would love to see him dead. Don't let them fool you. Kamala Harris's tweet yesterday that she was glad Trump was not hurt. She's lying. All of these people, including a lot of people on the right, would love for Donald Trump to die and disappear and be no more. They're okay with that. And you guys, oh, Paul, that sounds mean. That's Let me tell you something. These people shed fake tears, but no real tears, when children who they don't know are murdered in schools because it furthers their political agenda. I don't care who that makes mad. They are happy with school shootings because they can say, 
it happened again. How many kids does it take? It's always something like that, right? It's always a political stepping stone for them. It's never a true sympathy. It's always being upset for the sake of furthering something politically. So if they don't care about dead children being killed in schools because they're unprotected, do you honestly think they care more about Donald Trump, who they hate because they know him? They don't know the children who were killed in these schools, and they don't care about them. They know Donald Trump. So they have a reason to dislike the man because he's against all the unconstitutional, un-American things that they stand for. So they have a reason to hate him. So trust me, they're happy when he gets shot at. They're mad when the people miss, and they've stated it online. Guys, there's going to be a lot more come out about this. I wanted to wait a little bit as some of the dust settled so that I could get more details. I think I had enough to finally put something out there. But look for more coming out on this as well, because um, I think with DeSantis having his own investigation, we may actually get some information out of this whole thing that we can use. Plus, this guy, um, you know, he lived through it. He was not terminated. They took him into custody. And if I were the state of Florida, I would not wholeheartedly and absolutely turn this guy over to the federal government until I had been completely done questioning him and going over every single shred of evidence. In fact, I would not let any of that evidence leave the state of Florida if I were Ron DeSantis and I truly wanted to know what happened here. And I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.